everybody. Thank you for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed watching me play this solo and then hearing Bill play it and see it written out with the transcription. So as you've heard, this is a solo drum piece. It's called Drum Prelude. It's the opening track to this album, Duets with Bill Stewart. That's Duets with Bill Carruthers. I haven't heard the album. It's, it's kind of hard to find. It's, it's not on any music streaming services that I've seen. I haven't been able to find a CD. So I, I don't know what the album's like, but this is the opening track. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about some of the things that I've learned from checking out the solo. So first things first is this idea of playing a time-based solo. Um, the idea of keeping the ride cymbal beat going throughout and creating most of your interest by using the left hand, the comping, moving around the toms, different orchestrations, different rhythms, having that be kind of your overarching concept for playing a solo. I've, um, without even taking any specific vocabulary, I've had a lot of fun just soloing with this concept and seeing what I can come up with. Um, I'll do a little bit of playing. Of, of creativity. He has a few very clear ideas that he develops very clearly throughout this solo. Um, one idea that I took a lot from that gave me a hard time, which I, I truly didn't expect, is just the difficulty of playing upbeats with the left hand for a significant length of time at that tempo. Pretty challenging for me, right? Um, to start just on the snare drum, I, I tried keeping it going for, you know, upwards of two, three minutes sometimes. Try not to let the upbeats feel wishy-washy, try to stay locked in with the cymbal at all times. It's harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> extension of these upbeats, what Bill does is he, he starts the upbeats and then he brings in a foot ostinato, a, a very common Bill Stewart thing to do. Three beat figures with the feet, these are dotted quarter notes. It loops like that. Um, first, it's, it's both feet with the hi-hat closed. And then it's both feet with the hi-hat open every second one. And then it's both feet with the hi-hat open everyone. Right, very clear way to build intensity through this phrase. So I'll just play the way he plays it a little bit slower, just so we can hear it. stuff for sure. I've also heard him do some things with uh, the ostinato being upbeats, right? So maybe something like this. consistently so be finding ways to add texture without deviating from that concept it's, it's a very strong technique another thing that Bill does in this solo is just classic Bill is the idea of using these buzzes with the left hand for snare drum comping so using this sound 
right? Um, generally, I'm a traditional grip player, but I play these with match grip, usually with the butt end of the stick. I just find something about the warmth, the softness of the articulation, and the meatiness of the weight is, is really good. Um, as upbeats, you can play it like this. <laughs> Bill will often double it with the bass drum. It gives the sound a little bit of a meteor punch. And then of course, as you heard in the solo, he uses it as upbeat sometimes, and then also as quarter note triplet type things. Another thing that Bill does in this solo that's really cool, it flies by, he only plays it for one single bar, but I've, I've taken it and stretched it a little bit, is uh, this comping rhythm of half note quintuplets against the ride cymbal, or as I like to think about it, five evenly spaced notes in the bar. So the rhythm sounds like this. trouble hearing that how I used to get to it I'll, I'll put kind of the rhythm right here that I was that I'm hearing in my head at least as a starting place but uh swung eighth notes on beat one one and an upbeat on beat two and then the last two quarter note triplets on three and four right so it's, it's very close and then you just have to take that rhythm and smooth it out I'll see uh, I'll start with that rhythm and then smooth it out technique that I use a lot when I'm dealing with different polyrhythms that I'm maybe not super comfortable with. Finding a sound-alike rhythm that's very similar and then just, just sort of shrinking it or compressing it in whichever way I need to to get there. Okay, and finally, just another note about this quintuplet phrase. Um, when I first started to think about it, I thought it maybe wouldn't be that useful or it would be too obtrusive. But especially at the fast tempos, I noticed that it's actually quite useful. They're quite expressive. It's a, it's a good middle ground between your quarter note triplets, your quarter notes, right? They, they fit right in the middle. Um, I just like to do some playing, just to kind of show what's, what's possible with them. Of course, I'm not the shining example of all that's possible with quintuplets, but I have some ideas. So I'll do some playing.